I think it was Charles Hughes actually, and he got up and he he spoke about how he'd been um, to South America studying that year. Uh, and the reason the South Americans, the Brazilians, are so good at football, they play football on the beaches. They learn to control the ball with the uneven bounce off the beach, off the sand. He said, that's how they master their technique. So Jim Smith, who was sitting here, said, in that case, he went, why ain't Torquay Bournemouth and Brighton top of the bleeding league? <laughs> Where did it all start, Sam, for you as a schoolboy? What was you, you know, was you a good schoolboy player or...? It was, it was, uh, I was born in Dudley, uh, Harry, as you, you may yeah. well know. Some, a lot of people don't, not all people think I was born and bred in the Northwest, but I had to get rid of the accent when I moved to Bolton because <laughs> the lads were taking too much Mickey out of me with that, with that Midland accent, you know what I mean? So, in fact, I think quite a few couldn't understand what I was saying. So, I wasn't picked up by any of the local clubs, even though I had trials at Villa and West Brom and Wolves. Um, but but it was only when Bolton Wonders came for me, having played in the county team against Cheshire Boys at Stockport County. And um, the, the chief scout at, at, at the Bolton at that time um, asked me for my address, which I gave him, which he wasn't supposed to do, but... I gave him the address and uh, they drove down the next day to sign me on. And that was my dream, my dream come true. So uh, I left school as quick as I could and, uh, and joined the Wanderers in 69. Yeah. Uh, 15, I was. I know, I can remember like, you know, like Sam, you know, when a scout comes up to you and I, I played for East London boys uh, against Wanstead boys at uh, at West at Millwall Football Ground, the old den. It was a cup final <laughs> and uh, came off after the game and there was a scout. The guy stops me as I come off. He's, at, he's at, by the tunnel. Harry, he said, uh, Dickie Walker, he said, oh, I'm Tottenham scout. He said, uh, is your dad here? I went, yeah. He said, uh, I'll wait by the entrance. I'll like have a little chat with you. I mean, I went in that dressing room. I was like, absolutely buzzing. <laughs> we won the game four 0 anyway, and suddenly, Tottenham scout wants me. God, you're gonna talk to me, you know? And it was a great. And I went down with my dad. So Dickie Walker said, "Look, come down to Tottenham. I want you to meet Bill Nicholson." So we get on the truck, get the bus, get the bus, get another train. Off we go. We walk the freezing cold winter's night. Get to. White Hart Lane, there's Bill Nick, one of the all-time great managers, you know, double winning manager of Tottenham. Very dour man, you, know, you didn't get a lot out of him. But and now I'm stood there like, you know, I'm nervous as hell. My dad's with me, he was football mad and Dickie Walker. So he said to me, where'd you play, son? I said, right midfield. He said, uh, wide right. He said, you score goals? I said, um, no, not many. I, he said, I only know one good outside right who didn't score many goals. Now, his name was Stanley Matthews. He said, I don't think you're going to be, said, you're gonna be as good as him, are you? I said, I don't think so, Mr. Nicholson. He was right. <laughs> but, you know, you never forget that, Sam, do you? That first, no. that, the, the joy of it, you know, suddenly you, it's your life, isn't it? You, the, the highlight of your week, as you say, is playing for the town team, you know, and playing yeah. for the score at a town. It was just so special, wasn't it? So special. Different now, Harry, isn't it? When it's yeah. about we just we, it didn't matter what happened. You just wanted to sign on, didn't you? There were no oh. none of this none of this like it is today. How much you're going to pay my son and oh, what length of contracts no. is he getting and whatever? What I you know, my dad had to travel up with me and sign all, and my mum and sign the details off at Bolton Wanderers. Two hundred two hundred and fifty quid uh, signing on, split over three three years. I think a contract I got. Uh, it was forty five pound a week. And uh, I really couldn't be happier at that time. And uh, of course, I think if you got in the first team, the appearance money and the win bonus were greater than your wages then. So yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't really about the money. It was about, it was football, about the it? football, you know. Yeah. That was it. And, and then um, Ian Greaves gave me my debut. Oh, uh, what a man! Told, what a man! Eh, what a man. Yeah. Ian was was a great football man, wasn't he? We, yeah. you know, we used to go to Lily Shaw, Sam. The highlight of the year was the managers and coaches course at Lily Shaw. And I remember one particular year, one funny story, you know, Ian was one of the leaders, Jim Smith, they were all there. And uh, Walter Winterbottom got, got up and spoke, who was the England manager, Charles Hughes was there. I think it was Charles Hughes, actually, and he got up and he, he spoke about how he'd been um, to South America studying that year. 
uh, and the reason the South Americans, the Brazilians, are so good at football. They play football on the beaches. They learn to control the ball with the uneven bounce off the beach, off the sand. He said, that's how they master their technique. So Jim Smith, who was sitting here, said, in that case, he went, why ain't Torquay Bournemouth and Brighton top of the bleeding league? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that was how it was. I mean, we, you know, we'd all we'd yeah. all end up up the pub, Sam, every night talking <laughs> football, listening to yeah. the more experienced people like Ian and people like that, Malcolm Allison, and they'd be old in court, and it was brilliant times. You know, they were great. Miss them days, yeah. We miss them days, yeah. don't we? Yeah, Sam, we, Sam, with all the. Sam, with all the TV uh, cameras everywhere and social media everywhere, what could you get away with back in the day on the pitch? Oh. Uh, well, ooh. well, you can get away with the first tackle, uh, which had to be, according to Ian Greaves, had to be on the halfway line, and you have to make sure he knows he's in a game, and then you have to gently, gently pick him up and say, "Just be careful." There's more where that came from. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Uh, moving on to management, Harry. Do you remember your first experience as a manager? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, my first experience was an horrendous experience. I, I, um, <laughs> I managed a team um, on the Friday. We're playing Lincoln away, and on the Friday, uh, David Webb resigned. He had a row with the chairman. Dave was trying to buy the club. He had a consortium, and him and the chairman fell out, and he walked out. So now we're going to Lincoln. They got no. I'm taking the team to Lincoln. So we get up there, the pitch is frozen. Every game in England was called off that day, every, nearly every game. And Colin Murphy was a manager of Lincoln and they had a real good team, real good team. Trevor Peake, Shipley, uh, you know, they were all there, fashion. It was a proper, they were top of the top of the division. And somehow the, the other, they put the game on. And we, we only had long studded nylon studs. We were struggling, we had no money ball, we were potless. And they've all come out in their little pimpled boots. <laughs> anyway, with 25 minutes to go, we were 9 nil down. <laughs> 9 nil, right? <laughs> Sam, I ain't telling you a lie. It's freezing cold. I'm sitting there, 9 nil. 24, I'm thinking this is going to be 16, 17. This could be... A, and we get a corner. There's only me and the old kit man, John Kirk, who I love to bits. Kirky, what a lovely man. We're sitting there and we get a corner. And he's shouting at the centre. I was, get up, get up. I went... Get back, get get back. back. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? We're going to win 10-9. <laughs> anyway, we hung, on, we hung on at 9 nil for the last, you know, unbelievable. The last 20 minutes, we've hung on 20-odd minutes. 9 nil. we got beat. And mm. I thought, well, that's the end of me, you know. <laughs> and then we got beat 5 nil at the Orient on the Wednesday. Um, <laughs> I took the team on a Saturday home to Oxford, Jim Smith's Oxford, who were, who were second in the league at the time. And we beat them 3-1 at home. Went to Gillingham the four, following week, beat them 5-2. Uh, and um, and then they brought Don Megs in as manager, and uh, but that was my f Don, Don Don came in, and that but that was my first job in uh, in, in my first wow. chance of managing. But, yeah, who is the uh, the best player you've ever managed over the years? Well, oh, that's an hard one, isn't it? Because you know, I, I'd have to say for many reasons, and there's many of them. I'd have to turn back to the, to JJ Culture. I think that we signed him after the World Cup had finished. Um, from Paris Saint-Germain. We got him on a free transfer. Imagine that now, JJ Acocha on a free transfer. <laughs> um, and coming we, from Paris to Bolton, what a oh, move. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, He'd always dream of that, Sam. I mean, I was amazing, wasn't it? he did have something to do with the rather large wages we paid him, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that he, he, was, he, I met him in Paris. I met him before he went to the World Cup and uh, he's saying, I'll have to see what's going on. I want to come to England. But, and obviously, we were, he, he was thinking at the time we weren't really big enough for him. We got that. But at least we'd met him. And obviously, he came back from the World Cup and nothing was happening. So we arranged to meet him again, uh, me and my agent. And we met him again in Paris. And to our surprise, we did the deal in Charles de Gaulle Airport. And I thought, Brilliant. wow, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, rang the chairman up and uh, said we've, we've done the deal. What's the wages? Uh, he fell through his chair and I said, <laughs> oh, "Don't don't worry about it. This guy's going to turn help us turn what we Yuri York IF and him together. We're going to build a great wow. team." And um, and I said to JJ, "Are you coming? Are you going to stay overnight here? Fly back?" He said, "Look, I'm dry. I'll drive there tomorrow." 
So we came back on the plane and thought we might not see him again. And he jumped in his car the day after, drove, went through the tunnel, drove up and arrived at arrived at the Reebok Stadium uh, late afternoon and signed him on. But it, it was what he gave to the dressing room as well as what the entertainment value he gave on the pitch. He became the captain. He could speak four languages. He 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 showed wow. everybody how to play the game of football. And um, and and there's some of the tricks. It, it wasn't just the tricks. It was the fact that the tricks paid off. Yeah, if he yeah, did yeah. a trick, he didn't lose the ball. He came out the other end with it. And the whole crowd would get on the feet and we were selling these shirts. JJ's so good, they named him twice. And <laughs> the old buzz around the Reebok Stadium was you know, one, of, one of the delights with, with the quality of JJ culture. And, and yourself, Harry, who was the best player you've ever managed? Um, uh, probably Gareth Bale. Possibly. You know, Gareth, oh, wow. I him, he was absolutely flying at Tottenham at the time, you know. So he would be up there. I mean, I had Rio, obviously, and Frank and that when they were young. Di Canio was a genius, fantastic player for me, but and Modric. But uh, I would think Gareth Bale was when he was absolutely on, on fire. I mean, <laughs> Sam, you know, we've been we've played against each other's teams over the years, but I'll tell you, there's more aggravation in soccer aid. I promise <laughs> you. Like, you know, you've got to juggle about them, get them on, get one off. Get, how are you getting them on? I mean, a quick story. I had a fallout, Sam, with Kenny Doug Leash at Wembley. That was unbelievable, really. I'm, I'm there. We're playing away at Wembley Stadium. 78,000 people there. And suddenly, Craig David, who's been playing on the wing, he, I'm going to change him. And I, I put Gareth Gates on. So Gareth goes on. Gareth runs up the wing twice. Comes back. He can't breathe, right? He's got one. He's got an inhaler. Right? He's struggling. Gareth, you OK? Uh, all right, come off. So he's still got his gear on, Craig David. So, Craig, get back on. I put him on. Sam looks, uh, Kenny looks over to me. What's your game? I went, yeah, you're right, Ken. He went, you know the rules. He said, you can't put him on when you took it. I went, oh, shut up, Ken. Couldn't tell you what I called him. I said, you've, you've got, I said, you've got your two subs. I said, you bought him on. I mean, handling all those players is, oh, is a nightmare, actually. It is, it is a nightmare. Absolutely. absolutely. It, it's a wonderful experience. It is a great experience. experience. I, Good I look fun. forward to it every year. Gents, it's been an absolute pleasure. I can listen to these stories all day long. Sam, thank you very much for coming Sam, on the show. thank you, mate. All the best, lads, and good luck. Really appreciate it, Really appreciate it. Cheers, Sam. Good man, Sam. Take care, mate. See you. Bye. Cheers.